Hello and welcome to the Crimson Stitchery video channel about making all things beautiful and useful. My name is Anushka and you can find relevant links for this video for everything that I'll mention in the down bar here below on YouTube. And I'd like to just say hello and welcome back. It's been a little while since I've recorded one of these vlogs. We had to skip a week unfortunately due to technical issues that I may go into at the end of this video in conversational threads but I don't want to bore you right up front and let's just get to the interesting stuff straight away which is Amaryllis number two is a firecracker. Wow. Um, look at that, it's double and it's stripy. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can see that these three are looking a bit faded, which is a bit weird because this one's only just opened, so I don't know, maybe it got a bit maybe it got a bit overheated or something like that. But isn't that a corker? Fabulous. <laughs> and I'm just looking in my cup of tea that I've set down and there's a little fly in it, a little compost gnat. Yuck. <laughs> Never mind, bit of extra protein. Right, now that we have got the obvious stunner out of the way, in this episode I'm going to be chatting about what I've been knitting and giving you guys an update. And this vlog is coming to you guys courtesy of all of my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. And I also want to acknowledge and thank everyone who has made a one-off contribution to the Crimson Stitchery via Kofi. Your support means so much and it makes a huge difference and again I'll, I'll go into that a little bit later but I've got a knitting basket that is somehow full <laughs> full of knitting um yet straight off the bat I've got a finished object no it's not this jumper that you'll um you'll have seen before I don't know why I'm standing up making my head off camera You'll have seen this jumper before if you watched my sweater tour that I filmed and released at the beginning of the year. There's a link on screen now there if that tickles your fancy. But you weren't expecting to get flashed in a knitting podcast, but there you have it. Um, <laughs> I have made a finished object. I've knitted something using leftovers from this jumper. So that's a stashless endeavour as well as a winter warming endeavour. So let me whip this one off. Honestly, the amount of times that I find myself doing quasi strip teasers on this video channel, who would have thought it? So what I've made is a woolly vest and I am feel a little bit exposed now. I don't know why, because I would wear like a vest top in the summer but anyway let's um let's cover up slightly with our matching jumper and this one's got a little bit of a story so i like to listen to the audio podcast mrs m's curiosity cabinet hosted by the lovely meg and i think that meg watches this channel every so often um so hello meg if you if you are listening watching and it's an audio podcast so i like to just kind of pop it on on a saturday morning and i'll just pot around the house and do some chores and stuff like that um and meg was talking about suffering from the cold it's been really really cold here in london over the last couple of weeks it snowed um it was in the minus degrees below freezing and meg was talking about living in a drafty victorian house um, which I can certainly empathise with. I live in a flat in a converted Edwardian house, you know, what what at some point was a large double fronted house with like an annex on the side, like a servant's annex that's now been split up into four, four, different, four different properties. Um, and I also grew up in the kind of very typical uh, Lon Greater London terraced houses, you know, all the houses look the same, every couple are joined up and then you've got some that have got the alley down the side. Um, in the kind of house building style from like anything from 1880 to 1930 and the one I'm living in now is was built in like 1910 or something like that. So 
I'm quite used to living in houses which have got high ceilings, you know, bay windows, and they're super drafty all the time. Also, my family have got a penchant for wooden floorboards, including myself. I've, I've picked up that penchant, so I'm quite used to things being quite cold. So anyway, the point being that when Meg was describing this sort of draftiness, I really empathised. Um, but what she was talking about in her video was woolly vests. <laughs> and Meg said something along the lines of, I'm paraphrasing, Meg said something along the lines of, you know, in the past, like in the 70s, um, <laughs> people might be more likely to wear vests. Um, and by vests, we mean an undergarment, a warming layer um, that goes, you know, above your bra and, and underneath your blouse or your jumper. Um, and the American vest that's an outer garment, we would call, we might call a sweater vest, we might call a tank top, um, or if it's a tailored garment, we'd call that a waistcoat. So a little bit of um, transatlantic differentiation between terminology. Um, so yeah, when we're talking about vests, we're talking about this sort of garment here that you wear underneath. So Meg was chatting about how vests used to be ubiquitous and now it can be quite hard to find them in the shops and um, that they might have fallen into decline due to the rise of central heating. But as I was listening to this podcast and I was like washing up and walking around the kitchen and stuff i was like no they haven't fallen into decline meg what are you talking about i wear a vest nearly every day in the winter and so does pretty much everybody in my immediate family i've always worn a vest ever since i was a child it's the kind of thing that you dress a child in a vest with matching pants <laughs> um and then yeah as you get older i guess they stop being called vests but they start being called camisoles or base layers she mentioned as well or, or thermals and I've got, I've got a vest right here. <laughs> um, this is one that's from Uniglo and it's one of the, it's synthetic, whereas I guess when I was little, um, the vests I always wore were cotton, sometimes they were ribbed, sometimes they had that holy thing, just anything to trap warmth, really. So I was listening to this podcast, and I was like, Meg, I'm wearing a vest right now, what are you talking about? What are you talking about people who've stopped wearing vests because of central heating? The both can go together, and you can be really, really extra warm and toasty. <laughs> So anyway, obviously, you know, <laughs> I feel the cold quite badly. Um, so does my, my grandmother. Like most people in my family, we just really, really feel the cold. I, I'm assuming it's an inherited thing. Um, also, like, for instance, I don't really sweat very much. You know, even if I go out jogging for like a really long time, I think it has to be on like very quite a hot, warm day. And I have to be wearing too much clothing for me to actually like get a sweat on physiology and I've got quite bad circulation I've always always like since I was younger as well it's not just from from aging but I've always had like freezing hands and freezing toes so yeah like needless to say although I've just said it vests vests are still being worn but anyway so in her podcast Meg was and I'll leave a link to it below so that you can go and have a listen because as I said I'm paraphrasing and I'm probably putting words into her mouth and yeah all of the rest of it but Meg did a little investigation and she had a look in her um copies of Susan Crawford's vintage books which I talk about all the time on this channel and she said that she discovered that they were like cami knickers and that um also sparked something in me because when I was uh younger probably between the ages of of 18, 18 and 23, I would say, yeah, for, for half a decade, um, I wore vintage clothing m quite strictly, like as much as possible, whereas now I just enjoy it, but I also like to be more comfortable. And um, when I was wearing actual vintage clothing, I was often really cold, so I was often trying to f figure out how, you know, people stayed warm um because the clothing i don't know what it was about it i guess because it wasn't like loads of layers of of woolies but it was more like tailored garments and, and woven wool and so on and I, and I didn't find it very warm and um so i looked a lot into vintage undergarments including cami knickers or um, combinations which is basically a vest like this with a pair of pants attached um also known as a teddy um so yeah the whole time she was talking about that and the podcast i was like yeah 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 i know exactly what you mean so um Anyway, the point being, it was really cold. <laughs> Meg was talking about um, knitting a woolly vest. I was like, actually, that's a really good idea. Maybe I'll do that too. So there are loads and loads of knitted um, camisoles and tank tops and whatnot for the summer. And I'd 
Also, if you remember, you know, a couple of years ago or a year ago, all of those Jessie May bralette and, and camisole and knickers and all of that knitted patterns were really popular and I could never figure out why because I was like, I don't want a wool bra. That would be really, really hot. Um, I can't wear that in the summer, whereas people were like taking pictures of themselves wearing it with a pair of cut off shorts and, and the woolly bralette and stuff. I really didn't get it. It's a big, it's a big craze. If you knitted one, let me know in the comments because I need it explained to me. Um, apart from last week where it was below freezing temperatures and yeah, maybe maybe you needed, you know, this part of your core, your heart and your lungs, maybe you needed that to be swaddled in wool quite specifically. So I don't know, somehow I'd, I'd never made the connection between um, the woolly undergarments and the wool and the wool knitting and warmth and thermal properties and vests until Meg literally um, spelled it out in her in a podcast episode. So point being, I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I had a look in the Susan Crawford book and I found the pattern that knit these slimline undies. And that's a cami knicker pattern and I and I did it about saying oh should I make the cami knicker should I not and then in the end I just decided not to I thought um I didn't have anything against a cami knicker you know I like the idea of a teddy you can put little um poppers on the crotch so that it's it's easy to get in and out of um but yeah I thought I'll just I'll just try and replicate something a bit more that I've actually got in my wardrobe that I wear most days so I went for the vest um went completely off off piste with the pattern as usual and that's the pattern from the book, so it's Cami Knickers. You can see she's got the lace under the armpit, whereas mine was over the top. And she is doing her best to make this look sexy, this little ensemble, but that the legs don't fit her very well, do they? <laughs> and this model's actually, she's like an alternative model, if that's the right word, or she does like burlesque and fetishy underwear modeling. So if she can wear a woolly vest and look drop dead gorgeous, then it's possible. <laughs> and here's the piece off, just on its own, holding up there. You can see I added some gentle uh, waist and bust shaping there to nip it in. And the back comes up higher than the front. And then it's just got some basic two by two rib at the bottom. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, it's not the softest thing in the world. It doesn't bother me around my middle, but it's just that little bit at the top of the chest that is a little bit prickly tickly. So I guess if I was doing it again, I probably would do more like the, the design and the pattern was, which I did, basically didn't follow at all, <laughs> um, and actually make the lace quite a bit lower and have it a bit more scoop necked. But I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Following Meg, I decided to knit it in the round and I used some leftover of this Holst Super Soft that I made this jumper with, so that's why it's matching. And yeah, I, I added my own shaping because the pattern didn't have shaping. I did end up basically knitting it twice round because at first I um, cast on way too many stitches, tried it on, it was really unflattering. It needs quite a lot of negative ease. So I redid it. And then the second time I did it, I followed the, I had followed the pattern, which has like a band of ribbing at the waist, but in the whole super soft yarn, it didn't look good at all because this yarn doesn't have very much memory. So it just kind of splodged out at my middle, which didn't look very flattering. So I got rid of that. And then I just completely did my own thing, really. The only thing I did was I followed the, the lace pattern from the um, pattern up here, but I again did it in the wrong place because I was meant to start below the armpit and cast off at the, at the full bust, whereas I only started it above the bust and then I cast off and knit a high neckline. And as I was knitting it, I had my vest and I was just um, following the shaping. You know, I, I also made it a bit higher in the back because, you know, this part often gets cold, especially in the winter. And that's that really, cast off, put it in the washing machine to wash out the spinning oil. And then to finish it off, um, I'm wearing another vest underneath. <laughs> to finish it off, I sewed on some lingerie elastic that I had. It's the kind of elastic that you are meant to use to sew knickers. So it's got these little lacy kind of pico loops at the side and it's got a fuzzy texture on the bottom. So I just stitched that on by hand. And then um, obviously I had to try and make it more sexy. So I <laughs> used again some trimmings from my lingerie kit. So I've got a little black bow and then little satin roses on each strap. I'm sure you get the idea. Because if you're gonna knit a woolly vest and it's not sexy, 
you're not gonna feel so good. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about just saying like, I knit a woolly vest that totally sounds so 1970s, but like not in the, not in the glamorous, you know, Farrar Fawcett, Charlie's Angels way, like the real 70s where, I don't know, you had to like trudge to school. I guess I'm just thinking of my mum's childhood <laughs> memories. <laughs> you know, stuff that wasn't wasn't flattering. Um, so, you know, if you're gonna knit a woolly vest, you want it to be sexy. So I've done my best, done my ultimate best. <laughs> mm. And so I'm wearing it on top of um, my shop-bought cami because then I can wash the shop-bought cami more often and wash the woolly one less often um which will be good because wool is harder to wash blah 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 i've got to put it on a special setting whereas the other one i can just toss in with my my normal weekly wash my delicates and yeah i've got a finished object it took probably about a week to do and i really enjoyed having something that was simple and basic you know and i i didn't have to kind of overcommit to it because it wasn't a design piece which I'll talk about in a moment but yeah that was that was really really nice and I definitely need to have um, a simple straightforward project on the go at most times I think because um, with having so much design work I don't know where you have to think about things and calculate them and it just it's really really slow and time consuming so it's just nice to have something simple going on and it used up yarn that I had lying around which was really good um so i don't know i might make more of these in the future i've definitely got lots of leftover four ply yarns i definitely wouldn't go for anything heavier um than that um and yeah i've got my woolly vest so thank you very much meg for the suggestion <laughs> so i'll put this back on and then i'll keep going so let's put the vests away and keep going um something else that i've been doing is just loads of swatches i've got a pile of swatches sitting here one two three four that one's still attached to the needle five six seven swatches so been pretty busy and these ones at the top i created for a video tutorial series that I've been doing on swatches and um, this is something that was really heavily requested by my viewers and it's taken me quite a long time to develop the content and it's finally coming up so I hope that you have enjoyed that let me know how you found it um, <coughs> I don't know what it is about me I don't seem to manage to make and record a succinct tutorial I think just once I get started talking about whatever technique it is I just feel like I've got so much more to say and there's so much more that you need to know about the thing as I'm telling you how to do the thing so I'm like really cramming it all in those videos and I, I think that they're coming across more like lessons um, and you know maybe in the future I will do a more um, succinct tutorial series where I literally just go in show you the thing and go out but I'm, I guess I'm, I'm approaching it as a teacher where I'm like explaining it, showing it, showing it in different ways, talking through why what you're doing is making these certain results and what might happen if you, you, if you tried something else. Um, yeah, that's just, that's just how it is. So <laughs> come to my channel for very wordy and in-depth lessons. <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess if you just need to find out a uh, technique really quickly, then I would recommend just getting a reference book really. But yeah, loads of loads of swatches here. So I'm just going to put those aside. Um, also, I've got a, another new design, which is for a shawl. And I really love this. I just need to stitch in the ends and remove the stitch markers, you can see. Um, I'm not holding it too close to the camera, but as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful and it's fairly straightforward to work and it's good for um i've designed it for enthusiastic beginners and improvers because basically um a few of my friends have been reteaching themselves how to knit recently because there's nothing else to do <laughs> um these are like very high flying career women very high flying but they can't be high flying and fly around so <laughs> Not that I'm not high flying, not that, not that netters are not higher flying career women, but the point is that they didn't have like these kind of homely hobbies and now they're fine finding some and they've asked me to help them 
um, with pattern, pattern suggestions and stuff like that. So basically I designed this for my friends who are um, bored by the idea of a garter stitch scarf because they're too clever for that. But they are a bit intimidated by all the really complicated stuff. So this is sort of sitting in a happy medium about sort of learning about fabric and textiles. And it's been interesting, especially through the tutorials, putting myself back into a more of a beginner mindset when it comes to knitting and realising how much that you take for granted um, after you've done it for 15 odd years or longer probably and sort of how much goes unspoken and unsaid and I feel like there's not a lot of shortcuts when it comes to learning about anything you just have to sort of immerse yourself in it and find different sources and, and find the right sources um, of, of information basically so yeah I guess I'm, I'm really happy and flattered overall that people are asking me you know more um, and, and asking you know the Crimson Citry to put resources out because I think my attitude before was very much like oh but other people are doing it you know other people have written books and published books and I I didn't understand that people watching my channel wanted to get my in my personal input on techniques and yarns and materials and stuff like that so thank you <laughs> thank you for that I'm doing it I'm doing it now <laughs> it's coming slowly mm. so yeah um working on a pattern for that my pat my hat pattern that I talked about last time still not released for various reasons um some in my control and some completely out of my control so that's fine whatever it will come <laughs> it will come I'm really excited about it coming and the sh then there'll be a shawl pattern there's a sock pattern coming so many patterns coming honestly so many patterns coming um and then what else to, to talk about oh yeah these dark dark gray swatches they're going to be a fun project so I finally made a decision about these yarns Ooh, coming out with a needle that my friends and girlfriends uh, and colleagues bought me for my birthday these amazing sort of hairy metallic yarns in some of my favorite colors as, as you can see it's pretty much matching my jumper and they bought these for me thinking that I would make an ombre sock obviously these ladies are not knitters so they didn't realize that this is not the right kind of thing for a sock but what I wanted to do was knit the Andy Sutherland Arachne pattern which is the one with the spiderweb yoke and it took me the longest time to decide and buy the fabric for the body. Um, I got this for my birthday last summer, now it's March. Honestly, I feel like January was the longest month and then February's just zipped by. A bit mad. So it took me the longest time and it wasn't a priority for a while because I had lots of other projects to work on and finish and the never-ending design pile. <laughs> <laughs> honestly um and I finally decided that I was going to do grey I was thinking of doing pink for a long time hot pink and turquoise so super 90s love it um but I basically couldn't find the right shade of pink in the right type of yarn because I didn't want a superwash merino kind of flat and plain colour I wanted something a bit mottled I actually wanted something tweed because I thought that the hairiness of the tweed would look like a dusty cobweb is how my mind works um, and then in the end I've settled on this natural yarn which is a bluish kind of graphite grey it's very school uniformy but it's really nice yarn it's um, Rauwerk and it's a non superwash merino so it feels toothy um, but it's actually really bouncy and it's not itchy I don't know what, what to say about it like it is quite it's quite snuggly really <laughs> because it's still it's still the merino um but it does it's not slick because it doesn't have that superwash thing and it's uh, is it two or three ply so it's like bouncy and airy and really nice to work with and i've got two swatches because of uh trying to get the right uh drape and texture so i had to swatch twice with different needles and it's um this is a sport weight and this yarn is more of a i don't know maybe even Aran, like quite tight, but because it's a chain construction, I think I can just pull it tight to um, make it, I don't know, thinner. And then also because it's the spiderweb colour work, I think it's okay that it's a bit thicker than the background because then it will really be coming out and like sitting on the surface of the fabric. And then I'll probably use the silver uh, and light blue and I'll probably do a little embroider some little spiders or, or something like that. So I'm excited about that. I just need to measure this swatch. I just blocked it. And make a decision and cast on so I guess next time hopefully I'll be doing that and then what else I've also got a sock 
but I started this is just one of those you're in a zoom call and you need to do something because it's just going on for hours so this yarn is leftovers um, and I've already I've already made this kind of stripy yarn um, Christmas sock last year probably this time last year so I'm doing another one using the leftovers and I'll I think I'm going to give this away to my sister so I did the ankle and then I need to turn the heel and then I cast it aside obviously and yeah I think that is that is that I'm not used to um doing this vlog I think <laughs> because I'm out of the habit of it um but I'm really happy to be doing it again and let's move into conversational threads which is just chatting about different stuff and I've got something nice for you guys this week which is that um, the beautiful people at Madame Glam which is a very very fancy nail polish brand got in touch and asked me if I'd like to try out some of their products they basically make like salon grade professional gel nail polishes and I said "Ooh, that sounds lovely um, and they sent me this kit and it's all very um, it's all very fancy um, they've got really really nice nail polishes that they they picked out these red colors with glitter for me and like a UV lamp thing that you have to do your nails with and <laughs> they have an amazing range on their website which is why I was like I can't pick the colors please can you just <laughs> choose something nice for me but they literally have got every color you can imagine under the sun and excitingly they have offered you guys my viewers an exclusive discount code for 30 percent off which is crimson stitchery 30 and i will put that in the description box below with a link that you can click through to check it out so you might be wondering why i'm showing you the box and not my actual fingernails <laughs> well let me tell you something i always thought that i had really good fine motor skills i knit i sew i play the piano i play the cello i can dice an onion la 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 aren't i so great um <laughs> when it comes to makeup and nails i'm absolutely horrendous <laughs> absolutely horrendous and it doesn't seem possible for me to paint my nails without basically painting my whole hand in nail polish so um <laughs> For those of you who are really excellent at nail art and who have got the skills and practice then please do check them out because they're, they're a really nice brand and they're also like vegan, they're cruelty free. Um, the, the product is, is really really fantastic but what's not so fantastic is my own skill level. Um, the only reason that I can do black liquid eyeliner is because it's the same makeup that I've done pretty much every day since I was 16 years old. So <laughs> I haven't been painting my nails with gel nails. Um, <laughs> for for 14 years 14 odd years um so um yeah i i'm not showing my nails just because i painted it all over my skin and, and it looked really bad and i had to take it off but it's a really really nice product and if you like look at it in in youtube you see all these other nail artists who have like made these amazing stuff that i haven't so yeah thank you very much madam glam um for your belief in me <laughs> i wish i could make my nails as pretty as a professional but i enjoyed trying so conversational threads okay so I've cut down on doing this vlog because you can't do everything and I have accepted my limitations and if I'm going to do more designing and tutorials um, which I think I need to do for the longevity of the Crimson Stitchery as a brand um, then I, I can't also spend loads of time making stuff for myself personally and vlogging about it but I was thinking about this the other day and I thought where have all the knitting podcasters gone or knitting vlogs because I feel like there used to be so many more on my feed you know so many more people releasing weekly fortnightly or monthly vlogs and now it seems like there's not very many people at all and obviously I guess since the pandemic um people's lifestyles have changed I you know kudos to anyone with children that has had to start homeschooling I'm completely in awe of any any parent or, or carer in any way just wow um in fact, I just got off the phone to my auntie who is <laughs> celebrating <laughs> the idea of schools possibly reopening again. I'm not going to bore you with the dullness of England's pandemic strategy. So I continued vlogging through lockdown and, you know, did a lot of designing, released patterns, carried on with the video channel. 
and grew it. And I received a really nice comment from someone the other week who said, you know, thank you so much for, for persevering. You know, your watching your videos, watching your channels has, has really kept me going through the last year because it's almost a year of lockdowns in, in the UK and obviously it's much longer elsewhere. And I did, I did keep going and basically what happened <laughs> was that last week I had a really, really bad week. Just stuff wasn't going well and things were adding up and I was really down and then I was a bit under the weather and I just had a really, really bad week and I'm not sharing this with you to say, um, oh, you know, it's okay, you just had a bad week, everyone has a bad week. Like, I'm not trying to substitute vlogging for, I don't know, therapy and counselling. I'm not. But I guess I was just so trying my best to keep going for so long and staying positive and, you know, being there for my friends to whom I'm, I'm you know, I'm so loyal to my friends um, who are going through different types of difficult times for, for different reasons. And I just got really, really apathetic in the last week or so. And I think I just felt tired of being positive. I think that's it. And the reason that I'm sharing this with you is because, well, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I guess it's just to say that everybody has ups and downs and sometimes you're more down than you're up and it's perfectly normal. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or you're doing anything wrong. So the camera battery ran out <laughs> and I went and had some lunch and I'm back again with a new cup of tea. And I had a little think about what I was trying to say just now. <clears throat> I think what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to be really fatalistic or a drama queen and I don't like being overtly negative although I am naturally a cynical person a very cynical person question everything always been like that I was the kid that always asked why mummy why 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 and why and why you know that was me um it's my nature and yet trying to be like so positive and doing my best and feeling grateful like honestly grateful for what I do have and knowing that you know things are much worse for other people I don't know I guess just after a year of the pandemic and then you just have a bad week and sometimes you just need to say I'm just having a bad week I'm gonna wallow for a couple of days because that's all I seem to be able to do when everything I'm trying to do is going completely wrong even though it's out of my control and it's not my fault and all of the rest of it I don't know sometimes you can just wallow and what I realized after I thought about it a bit more was that it's not the end of the world basically you can just have a bad week you can have a you can have a bad month and maybe even worse things can happen to you I don't know about you but like my friends always describe me as a very resilient person and that always yeah that's always surprised me whenever someone has said it but people have said it to me a lot um and they've said it to me a lot in the last couple of years and what I realized about myself is that when all of the crazy stuff is happening I keep calm I keep a cool head and I get very strategic and you know and whatever whatever needs to happen I kind of push through and then it's afterwards a week a month a year I'll get really sick I'll, I'll get a horrible flu that I can't shake off I'll become exhausted I'll have insomnia and it's it catches up with me much much later it's kind of what I've realized um so I think it's 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 sort of what I'm trying to say is like sometimes you're internalizing a lot of stuff and you don't even realize what's going on in the background of your mind. I also realized that around this time every year, around February, March and April, in the past, I've become very ill and I've also become very depressed. Um, I've had really, really difficult periods in my life. And maybe that's to do with seasonal affective disorder. 
um, I've spoken quite candidly before about this, about how I discovered it was just a simple vitamin deficiency, vitamin D, after having a lot of blood tests from my doctor. But what I'm realising now as I'm approaching 30 is like, this will happen. It's just the thing that happens to me every spring and it will, you know, it will pass. I'll, I'll move through it and, and that's that. And I get, think that's kind of comforting to realise that it's a pattern and I can do my best to try and change certain circumstances, you know, set myself up for success, set myself up for good health. That's something that I've been exploring a lot on the podcast when I talked about exploring things like herbal remedies, traditional remedies, herbal medicines. And that, for the most part, has worked really, really well, I've got to say, about like boosting immune system and, and rest and so on and so forth. And it's something that I work into the knitting um, as well. <clears throat> And I've always, like I said, I've always been very candid about it and people that watch the channel know that. Um, I'm, I'm also thinking that if you're new to the channel, this is probably not the best first vlog to watch. But nonetheless, I think what I'm trying to say is just sometimes you just have a bad week or a bad couple of weeks and that's that. And you can grit your teeth and, and, and get through it. And sometimes the best thing that you can do is just rest and and step aside and and that's it really <laughs> it's like sounds so obvious but anyway I guess I'm just saying this in case there's anyone out there who needs to hear it quite frankly because it's not about moaning it's not about saying oh everything is so terrible we're in a pandemic da 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 I don't always find that kind of complaining cathartic but it's just an acknowledgement, I think. Um, sometimes that's all that's all that we need, like just someone to take you in hand and say, it's perfectly normal, you'll get through it because you always do. And I don't know, like, <clears throat> just as, oh, my earrings just fallen out, just as I don't like too much moaning, I guess too much relentless positivity can just seem naive, but, I guess we need a little bit of everything and and a little balance um yeah <laughs> so thank you for listening to my ramble um i guess it just feels good to admit that because with wanting to grow the crimson stitchery and turn it into an excellent set of resources for viewers readers listeners it's quite a lot of pressure that i put on myself um, because essentially what I realised was, you know, for years I've been knitting and I've been making up my, my own designs and, and all of the rest of it. And people have said to me, you should have a vlog, you should do this, you should do that. And I kind of said, oh no, it's not what I want. It's just a hobby, this, that and the other. And then I realised only recently, um, and we actually are at the two year anniversary for the Crimson Stitchery in, in late February. Um, so yeah, drop me a comment if you've and let me know how long you've been watching. I'd, I'd be really interested to hear. But I kind of realized that I had something unique to offer and that actually through the knitting, I could pull together a lot of my strengths, which is, you know, an, an, a very genuine and long-standing interest in materials, processes, and techniques with my interest in philosophy, my constant having, <laughs> I'm constantly having an existential crisis, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I realised that actually by thinking through textiles, through cloth, I can explore some of the big questions I had about society at large, um, the economy, um, globalisation, um, <laughs> industry, marketing, and all the kind of my unease. We can find that all through textiles because it's how we clothe our bodies. Um, I've also formally studied textiles. I have an MA in, in the history of fashion. Um, and I, you know, I was looking at the sociology of fashion, essentially, uh, clothing and dress. Um, you know, I've, I've presented at international conferences on this topic and now I'm, not, I'm doing my PhD on it. And I realised that doing this channel and, and through designing was this really, really interesting creative opportunity to make that bridge between theory and practice but it's not even just theory and practice but just like different types of thinking thinking through doing 
with your hands through making and sort of abstract concepts and how those can be sort of grasped, you know, transformed and harnessed. So that's what I like to do at the top end. But on the bottom end, it's a lot of um, admin, as is any kind of, you know, business endeavour, which is basically what this is turning into. Um, which is why I'm really, really grateful for everybody who watches and comments. I really, really mean it. I know I say it a lot. Um, I did have, you know, some plans for um, doing different stuff for the two year anniversary. A lot of it fell through. I told you I've been having a difficult week. Loads of stuff fell through. Um, loads of stuff took a longer time. Loads of technology failed or was difficult or challenging or unexpected. What I also realised is that through kind of trying to upgrade the Crimson Stitchery, because I didn't, because I didn't say, oh, I'm going to start a business and write a business plan and, ap and apply for a loan. You know, I didn't do it that way. It's been kind of growing organically out of a hobby in my free time. And slowly as it's, you know, bringing in a bit more income, I can then justify the many hours that I spend on it. And not just me as well. My partner is fully involved. You know, there, it's two of us running this. Um, yeah because it's happened organically, it hasn't always happened very efficiently. And because I don't have a lot of disposable income slash none <laughs> to play with, I, I was dependent first on the YouTube ad revenue and then on people contributing via Ko-fi. And then I set up the Patreon in January, which honestly has been so amazing. And I want to thank everybody for even considering contributing on, on Ko-fi or Patreon because it makes a really big difference. I wrote a note on the YouTube channel last week when I was, recently when I was having this, you know, uh, issue, technological issue, because I'm saving up for a new computer that can actually do video processing in a proper, efficient manner. Um, and I'm going to do that when we reach 100 patrons over on Patreon, and I think we're around 80. Um, and also, I just want to thank everyone while I'm talking about the numbers. Does anyone that's contributed honestly at all even if it's just a tiny bit if you signed up for my patreon and then you had to cancel your subscription for, for personal reasons you know some people reached out to me and explained that I, I totally get it and I I'm just really happy that there are so many people here and even just watching and telling other people and and sharing um because I feel like I've got I've got a lot to say and it feels like it feels like you guys are interested in hearing it even though this is like a particularly rambly long-winded one um <laughs> Anyway, hopefully you're just kind of chilling out with your projects at home. And I guess I'm becoming a little, this episode a little bit like um, like Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel Knits. Really like her, as do lots of people. She's fab. Um, but yeah, also I'm maybe oversharing a little bit. But I'm building the Crimson Stitchery as a business for and with you guys, the audience. So I feel like actually I can be very honest and transparent. You know, obviously I don't tell you everything. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you every single thing that's gone wrong <laughs> behind the scenes, but I'm just giving you an indication, um, just so that you know, I guess, how much how much work's going into it, which is a lot. But yeah, I'm saving for a new computer, which is why your contributions are really, really, really helping. And also, then I sort of just realised that with all the new things that I'm trying out for the Crimson Stitchery, it's basically a systems upgrade. It's a long-winded, slow and slightly inefficient systems upgrade so that I can work more efficiently. Like with my Patreon income, the last month I bought a new piece of software which is just already like in, from five minutes of using it, I was like, oh my goodness, this software is so much better. I could have saved like days of work in the past by doing this. Just like lots of things like that. And whenever you have any kind of systems upgrade, whether it's your mobile or, you know, your bank or your, your work computers, Everything always goes black for for a few days or a few weeks, right? Well, all of the, you know, bugs and stuff are sorted out and there's lots of tweaking. And yeah, I think I'm just having to accept that I had all these plans for the Crimson Stitchery in 2021. I'm now executing them. I'm working through them. It is taking a long time because that is what happens. And there's going to be a lot of transitions. Um, meanwhile, designing patterns, writing tutorials and still writing my monthly newsletter. And I'm still here. I'm still here. So if you've got to the end of this video, thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you for still being here. Thank you to everyone who's shared the Crimson Stitchery over the last couple of years and who's got involved. And a big extra special thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.
and I'd like to give a shout out to those who have joined at the Crimson Queen level. Thank you so much to Angie Scheitel, Jamie Pung and to Shelley. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you're in the market for doing your nails, don't forget about the discount code for Madame Glam. That will be down in the description box below with a link that you can click through. And to anyone that has had a bad week, month, year, I, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just trying to say I have too, despite my attempts at staying upbeat and chipper. It, it kind of chips away at you being in a global pandemic, not having your normal support systems, not being able to see friends, not being recommended to like hug family members and stuff like that. It's a year, it's been a year, it's been a year. And in some ways I think I and other people have made adjustments, so at least we know what to expect, but that doesn't mean that it's got easier. So the next few videos you'll see on the channel um, will be a continuation of my swatching series and hopefully some new designs hopefully i'll be able to get those out and i'm looking forward to chatting to you again at the crimson stitchery soon take care happy knitting <laughs>